All right, I'm back with another worst of best. This one is a sequel to the Deep Purple one. This one's gonna be about Rainbow. If you watch the Deep Purple one, I said Rainbow in the 70s split off into two bands. After Stormbringer, it split off and turned into Rainbow, and then after, from Richie Blackmore's side of it, and it also split off into the next album was Come Taste the Band, but that kind of like eventually turned into White Snake because you got Ian Pace, John Lord, and David Coverdale all in the same band together. So the two different sounds kind of went this way. But then Rainbow gets Roger Glover. When that ends, they do a, a, a Deep Purple reunion and we get Perfect Strangers on. So if you follow just Richie Blackmore's career, Basically, his musical progression goes from Deep Purple, Rainbow's just like a different lineup of Deep Purple, bunch of different lineups, comes back into Deep Purple because the last album was bent out of shape, sounds the same producer, almost two of the same guys, comes Perfect Strangers lineup, so let's go into this. I'm gonna go, oh, no greatest hits. No live albums unless I cheat, and I cheat on almost all these lists. Number 10, we go Ben Out of Shape. Ben Out of Shape was, in the 80s, the last Rainbow album. This is basically the prequel to Perfect Strangers. Sounds a lot like Perfect Strangers. Production sounds like Perfect Strangers. Uh, it's really only got one big standout hit anybody remembers, and that's uh, Street of Dreams, which is total banger. Every... Rainbow fan loves that song, but the rest of them, it's a good listenable album, it's just not great, it's not like Stranded's okay, and Drink with the Devil, and eh. there's better, there's a lot better Rainbow, more inspired stuff, they, they were kind of running out of gas, they needed another lineup change, that lineup change is Perfect Strangers. Alright. Here's another musical progression, after the battle rages on, in, what was it, 93? Blackmore leaves and starts up Rainbow again. And this sounds like the follow-up to that Battle Rages On album, Stranger in Us All. I like this one. It's all, it's got a, you know, studio musicians, guys who were not that, Chuck Berge was in a bunch of bands. I think he's like Billy Joel's drummer now or something. And he was in Blue Oyster Cult. But I think the best song on this one was uh, the Hall of the Mountain King. Do 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 the old classic thing. Um, I like all the songs on this. A lot of it's really good. Uh, this basically then rolls into Blackmore's Night because his wife's on here, Candace, and I like this album. It's good. It's just doesn't have the fire of the old Rainbow, and you can tell he was, you know, he become. He's more comfortable doing Blackmore's Night. I'm, I'm gonna be, I've never really bought that many Blackmore's Night, and I saw them twice in concert. I only got one album. That one was uh, Ghost of the Rose, and they do Street of Dreams on this. Well, am I right? Was it this one? No, it wasn't this one. That was the other one I downloaded. I forgot what the name of that album was. All right, this is cheating, but this was like my first Rainbow album I ever got. It's Final Vinyl. It's uh, it like leftover B-sides, a couple of live tracks. And it came out, feel like contractual obligation, but I love it. It's got like my definitive version of a lot of Rainbow songs. The Since You've Been Going On Here from uh, Monsters of Rock Festival in 1980, that's like my favorite version of that song. If you heard like the actual version on the Down to Earth album, it kind of stinks after hearing this one. Uh, Power, version of Power on here is way better. You got a cool... Uh, it's got all, all the different singers on here, tracked by one of them doing live. You got Dio's on here, Long Live Rock and Roll, it's like a little funny rap with the audience in between. I like that, that's why I like this one. It's, it's essential, if you're a Rainbow fan, this is essential. More, like, the other live albums, no, this one is. So, what do we got now? We got some, now we got Down to Earth, Graham Bonnet. I like Graham Bonnet, but he was better on that final vinyl. Um, Eyes of the World's good. Uh, every, does every band gonna have a song called Danger Zone? 
And Black Sabbath had one too. And Quiet Riot, I know, had one. Lost in Hollywood's good. All night long. That's the banger on this album for sure. I like this one. It's good. Yeah. Could be better. I don't know. It's they're all well, they're all good. This just one. Oh, this also last appearance of Cozy Powell. Probably my second favorite drummer. Number one is Nick Mason. All right, here's my controversial pick. Is it's a Deep Purple album. What's a Deep Purple album doing on here? Because it's got Jolyn Turner. It's got Roger Glover. It's got Richie Blackmore. Like I said, you follow Richie Blackmore, you've got like the history of Deep Purple there, because they kick out Ian Gillen. And they just bring back the Rainbow lineup, basically. So this album is my kind of my 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 ground for think saying that Rainbow is just different lineups of Deep Purple. And this is where the, the two mesh together. Plus also, Don Airy was in this. Where'd he end up later on? Deep Purple. And where are we at now? Number five. Number five is Difficult to Cure with the song Difficult to Cure. Oh yeah, that's another thing on Final Vinyl. Him playing Difficult to Cure with a whole symphony. I forgot to say that. I Surrender's on here. Spotlight Kid's on here. Uh, Can't Happen Here is pretty damn good. Like I said, Difficult to Cure is on here. All really good stuff. Then he's got like kind of like a boring uh, instrumental. He does that on like almost all of them. Uh, this one's maybe next time. It's spelt in German or something like that. I didn't like the one that was on Ben Out of Shape either. I think that was called Weisheim. Uh, Alright, we're in the top four. Who was missing? Dio stuff. That's what was missing. Long Live Rock and Roll, number four. Uh, of course, the title track was awesome. Gates of Babylon was awesome. Kill the King. Is that the first thrash metal song ever? I don't know. I don't know. It could be. The Shed. That was pretty brutal and badass. This, this is the beginning of true, this is like power metal came from, maybe the album before that, but this is, this, this is basically the beginning of the Dio band. Like, all right, he goes into Black Sabbath next, so the Dio band was kind of like a mix of Rainbow meets Black Sabbath, but if you're a Dio fan, of course you got this one. Number three, we're giving love back to Joel and Turner. This is his best album with them. Uh, Death Valley Driver's on there. Stone Cold's on there. Stone Cold Steve Austin himself loves that song. Uh, Tearing Out My Heart's great. Power I like. Miss Mistreat is pretty good. Eyes of Fire is like the big prog rock song at the end. I love that one. What's next? Number two. All right. These two can duke it out. They're both great, but I think the first one's got slightly more bangers on there. Uh, this one has got the best rainbow song ever. Stargazer on there. I'm going to say that's also maybe the best song Dio ever recorded. That or uh, Heaven and Hell, but Stargazer's on there. Tarot Woman. I keep calling it Tarot Woman, but in the song he's saying Tarot Woman. Uh, Light and Black, Do You Close Your Eyes, it's kind of like the Fast Rockers, the only song here that's like reasonably short, that's three minutes, well, Run Will the Wolf is almost four minutes, eh, Star Trek four, alright, I lied, whatever, I didn't think about it too deeply, but, uh, pretty damn solid, so what was what, going to be number one, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow is number one, because you know why, he's got Man on Silver Mountain, uh, maybe that's, Probably the second most well-known, third, I don't know, Street of Dreams, well-known Rainbow song. This, this is the one you're going to hear on classic rock radio, if you hear this stuff at all. Still, I'm sad. I love that instrumental. That's like one of the first things I accidentally figured out on guitar. I'm just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like oh, that kind of sounds like that, and I figured it out. And I suck at ear playing. Uh, if you don't like rock and roll, it's great. It's Temple of the King is great. Snake Charmer, Catch the Rainbow... Badass stuff. This is the absolute classic. This is where this is where uh, Stormbringer leaves off. You get this. He was kind of like unhappy with Stormbringer. Like, oh, I'm sick of them. I want to do more of my stuff. I'm sick of hearing Glenn Hughes. And uh, 
Coverdale. I'm starting my own band with the, our opening act, the guys from Elf. Most of this band is the guys from Elf. It was open for him. And then he replaces everybody. You do this live on. That's why I'm going to talk. This is relevant. This is uh, him promoting this album, but he's got the lineup for The Rising on there with uh, Cozy Pal and all those dudes. And I say they jam on way too long on this stuff. They turn Catch a Rainbow into like 15 minutes and 36 seconds and mistreated. Well, that's 13 minutes. Usually. Oh, that was a long song to begin with. Still, I'm sad it's 11 minutes long. Although, this sounds like some some of his jams from uh, in between songs, his long jams from the, the, the previous tour, the Deep Purple tour that was before that, the Stormbringer tour. He was doing some of his same shtick live, but it's good. There's also a million other live albums from Rainbow that were from that tour. I don't need that, all that. That's kind of repetitive. Uh, this one's pretty good. This is from the Difficult to Cure tour, live in Boston, 1981. And it's got a lot of stuff from like, uh, doesn't have the, a lot of the early Dio stuff. It's got Long Live War Rock and Roll on there, Man on Silver Mountain. Well, actually, it's got Catch the Rainbow. But a lot more of like the Joel and Turner stuff and some Graham Bonnet song or two. Basically a completely different vibe than like the the proto power metal stuff he was doing. This is more him going to like 80s Journey type AOR. So we, we, we're not talking bad about Journey because I love Journey. And then here's my other one I got. I got a lot of these on record. I didn't feel like dragging them out. Keep this video short. We're at just about 12 minutes. So we're going to cut it off. If you like this, uh, I got other ones. I did Deep Purple, of course, I did Pink Floyd, I did Queen, I even did 33 different Elton John albums, so watch all those. Uh, comment, don't say anything mean and weird. If you get really angry watching a video, just, what's wrong with you? It's a video, watch another video. I never understood that stuff. It was, oh, jerk. But anybody else who stick around and watch the whole thing, thank you. There will be more. I, I will get to Kiss. I will do Kiss eventually. All right, speaking of Black Rose Ramp, I went to two of his concerts. One in Connecticut, one up in Boston, past Boston. I forgot the name of that little town. Somerville or something like that. Or Somerset. I don't know. Somerville. Somerville Playhouse. And after the show... I'm at a red light down the street from this place. And there's a big giant limousine pulled up. I was like, oh my God, that's him. That's Richie Blackmore in that. There's no other. Why would there be a limo there at like 11 o'clock at night leaving this little small suburb of Boston? I was like, I was next to the man. But here's the other thing. I don't remember how to get back to the highway from there. So I had to follow Richie Blackmore's limousine back to Boston. I figured if he's staying anywhere, he's staying in Boston. I can find my way back from Boston, back down the Cape. I followed Richie Blackmore. That was my experience. That was a weird show, too. He started late. The crowd was getting a little rowdy. Half the crowd for Blackmore's Night were all dressed up in like their Renaissance Fair stuff. And the rest were like classic rock Deep Purple fans. And, you know, you got like... Some dude sitting there with, oh, we mean Lady Penelope. And then the other guy's like, play Street of Dreams, man. And then the building made them cut the concert short. And then everybody got angry and pissed. It was great. It was seeing, he had to be about 65 at the time, but he was still being a rock star and causing hell and causing havoc and whipping up an audience. That's why I came. That's why I saw. I don't even really have the Blackmore's Night stuff. But I was there to see him be rock star, and he was drinking beers in between every song and handing out goblets to everybody in the front audience. He was getting all into it. I love that show. That's probably like my third favorite concert of all time.